You're still early, aren't you? Still time for a few more to squeeze in. There's room for two at the front here. Two at the front if you want to come out. Can I just say, I'm going to be taking pictures from the front, if that's okay with everyone. But you're in the dark, so I can only see first row. Yeah, so the reason, <laughs> I, the reason I've asked the to do that, if you would prefer not to be, then just uh, tell me afterwards. <laughs> uh, but if you, uh, the reason is not is because there's a lot of students who can't get here, applicants who can't get, costs, you know, uh, distance and so on. So we thought we'd record this talk and then I'll put it online so that people can get it afterwards. So that's the reason that someone's going to make some pictures. So, um, did anybody come by the building site on your way in? Yeah, you saw that? Which, um, you know, universities love to, love to invest in real estate, they love to make sort of massive buildings because people can point at it, and this one is going to be particularly shiny. So I've come to work here so that I can be a part of this moment. This is a £42 million pound investment by the university in this moment of technological convergence. It's a moment where, you know, I was trained as an editorial photographer, a photojournalist, and I did that for 20 years, and, um, and I used to make prints back in the day. Eventually I moved over to making digital images. But I made photographs, that's what I did. And what you are gonna do will not be that. You are gonna make images, and your images are gonna be on mobile devices, and mobile devices that people will carry, and they, they love to show moving images as well, and they come with speakers on. So it means that you're going to have to have all the skill sets of a traditional photographer, that's a given. But you're also going to have to have all the skill sets of a sound designer and of a filmmaker. This building is going to have, this building houses that, that much, because it's not just us. Convergence means a lot of different disciplines all coming together. And that's what will happen in this building, which will open this year, next year. If you come here next year, then this is, this is where a lot of your study will be. Your photography will be largely in here, because we own this footprint, this photography. There's a big old subterranean footprint if you've been in it. Teaching rooms upstairs as well, but you've seen this. But over here, we'll have access to things like, you know, black box 3D motion capture and so on. Um, we, we won't be the only people, because if you want to book that space, just like any other piece of equipment in this university. So if you walk past all the fashion kits and all the textiles kits and all the... If you went into Waverley Building and had a look at the animation, illustration and all the filmmaking kit, all of it is yours when you arrive. So this would be yours as well. But you'd be, you could be working there with photographers, but equally you could be working there with animators as well. And, and I asked this question earlier on, and there was just me and one other geeky dude who put his hand up. Did anybody see The Mandalorian? One, oh man, it's just me oh, again. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll hang out afterwards. Well, I'll just chat afterwards about that then. <laughs> so, yeah, so Mandalorian, Star Wars franchise, film, you know, big sweeping vistas, beautiful landscapes, completely enthralling, photographed in a studio, nothing outside whatsoever. Photographed in one of these, with one of these backgrounds, this big curve. So a room like the big studio next door will be a very, very small one of those, and, and with the big curve in it. They have the mid-ground, stuff on the floor and so on, where the actors can run around, but then they also, they have the backgrounds changing. And we, the university sees this as a really important step, VP, virtual production, and they've invested heavily in it. We will be a strong voice in how that comes to shape. So we will be working in these areas for your photographs, for your shoots, for your film shoots. So we have, I've just come from one of these, so I have to situate myself as a co-learner at this point, because I've never done virtual production. And so I've just been to a virtual production studio and had, I went there to see what was there for photographers and, and I realized that there was a moment happening that was, that was really, really quite special. So, I'm standing, I'm standing here, uh, I'm standing here, and there is, um, there is a, a camera operator over here with a director standing next to them. And the director says, 
uh, talent coming into frame. Talent coming into frame. So talent refers to what I would have thought was the actor, right? But the talent could be a dog or a banana, so it's talent coming into frame. She says that, a person walks on to, into the frame. As he's doing that, someone over here on the, what's it called, the dream bar? Was it called the dream bar? The dream yes, bar. Yes. Dream bar. Someone working on the, the dream bar is working over here, operating the background. And this, and someone next to the person operating the dream bar says, objects coming into frame, right? Which sounds like nothing, but it's, but the reason he said that is because this person over here has a film background and is, is a film director directing a film. This person over here who is operating the background has a background in games design because the background is built in Unreal Engine. So this is literally a moment of convergence where games design and filmmaking are coming together and they haven't even worked out the language to use yet, let alone skill sets. This is literally an emergent moment for these skill sets, which is why, which is why we want to be in there. So more traditional green screens as well, other stuff. To, so let's talk about, has anybody got any questions about that stuff? This is, I believe, why you, you came. Who here, can you just give me a, mo a motion, a movement, not a motion, can you give me a, a, a movement for those people that came for fashion photography? Great, okay, great, lovely to have you. And those people that came for sports photography. Great, thank you, lovely to see you as well. Okay, so the rest of you there are for the, the sort of the traditional photography course, I take it. So we're about to celebrate our 90th year, 90th anniversary. We are the oldest course in the country. I think we are the second oldest degree, or it's the other way around. Um, and, you know, what that means is that when you come to NTU, I mean, I was mindful of this when I came here, because for me, I was taught by people who studied at NTU. So back in the day when I was study, wanted to study, I wanted to learn printing from a, from a photographer called John Blakemore, who was the best black and white printer in the world. And he taught at Derby. And then I also wanted to work at NTU, because this is where, you, this is where at the time, not now, at the time, this is where you came to learn photojournalism. So, I have known about NTU forever, but coming here to be head of subject for me is great because I get to say that I'm head of subject at NTU, which is really, you know, amongst my peers. What I didn't expect when I got here was to learn about the team and so on, which I have since learned about, to learn that John Blakemore is still alive. He's not printing anymore. He has to be less one person in the world print his photographs, and that's a guy called Jed Boyland, who is working his next door who's gonna take you through the activities. So the best printer in the world lets one guy print his prints and he works here, which is awesome. But apart from, apart from that, what you join when you come here is a, is a 90 year alumni. It's a substantial network. So it means that when you, when you start to reach out through those networks, when you leave, which we found sort of super useful just recently, that the, you become a part of a bigger family, which, is something one can't really sort of put a value on, but having just had to write a course, having just had to write the first course in the world in a subject area, for me it was invaluable to reach out to the people who were at that emergent moment in sports photography. So we put this slide up, really because when, when I went to study photography, it never occurred to me that I might, might want to make films of subjects swimming. It didn't occur to me that would be a thing. But now it's obviously, why wouldn't you make films of people that are underwater? Why wouldn't you make films or anything else? Why wouldn't we be building soundscapes around this? Imagine if you've got the task in one of your lessons and it said, photograph a perfume. Have you ever th thought about how you would photograph a smell? How would you tell the story of a smell? Why wouldn't you look to things like this? So what you'll be learning is really gonna be built on, built around what, what's driving you, what, what, your, what your loves are. I, we, I put this slide in, I'm gonna go really quickly over it, but please will you stop me? So we use terms when we're here, and you'll hear them all day to day, and uh, we already always assume that everyone knows. And when my daughter went last year to apply somewhere, um, 
she didn't know what these terms meant. So I realised in fact we should just take, say this quickly. Undergraduate. Undergraduate is somebody who has not completed a degree course yet. If you are applying for the BA Photography, then you are applying for an undergraduate course. You will be an undergraduate when you arrive. I still talk about years one, two and three. Uh, they are now referred to as years four, five and six. six. So first year is level four. The, each year you will do 120 credits of work in order to pass. Um, as I say, you, they'll be divided between the modules. As I say, modules now, I used to do classes. So does that, I, I won't spend any longer on that. It's just a sort of, is that okay? So on all three courses, when you arrive, this is like a boot camp. Within the first half of the year, you'll use almost every piece of kit in this, in this floor. So you'll get access to all the toys. You won't be very good at using them, but you'll be safe and you'll be there to explore and take them out whenever you want. So in the second half of that first year, we'll be expecting you to really sort of begin exploring with that stuff. But we also acknowledge in that first year that that um, that's very much a transitional space. So a lot of people will have come directly from A-levels. And um, that's, although A-levels are the most stressful thing ever in the history of the world, that they, they are also quite structured. Um, so we're mindful that transition into working at an undergraduate is, uh, is, is, will be, will, might seem less structured, but it relies on you being able to structure your learning. So we help people through that process. Um, the other thing is as well that at that age, you know, a lot of stuff happens, you know, moving away from home for some people. We're at an age where things come, we acknowledge that there are, that we have to put stuff in support for people at that age. So that first year really acknowledges that. You need to pass the first year. Nothing from the first year is going to count in your final degree. So don't stress about it. Second year is more, you're feeling more confident, you know how to use a kit, you know how to get out of the stores now, you know your way around the buildings, Nottingham is home. You've made new friends. For the first time in your life, your new friends are not just where you live. You've actually just put your hand up and said, I really want to study this subject. And the room full of people with you have said exactly the same thing. It's the first time you'll make friends with people who are as passionate as you are about this thing that we're doing. And you will make friends here that you will have for the rest of your life. So during that second year, we'll be expecting you to really explore and push you. This, at this point, we start to challenge you, push back. You're comfortable now, so we need to see what you're actually interested in and what are you going to do. And you will be encouraged to explore. You'll be marked on process, not product. We won't expect you to be any good at this stuff still. We just expect you to be really committed to failing a lot. In the third year, in the third year, we don't think about that as we don't think about that as you finishing the course. That whole year is designed as a campaign, a campaign where you are launching you. So by this time, we've kind of worked out what it is that really makes you tick, that really makes you burn. You've begun to make friends with people who feel similarly or feel differently, but you've begun to find those networks of people that support you in your creative process. At that point, we begin to find out who your audience is. I'll ask you things like, what is it you? Start with one of these three, 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 three things. Something to say, someone to talk to, something you want to happen as a result. You can start with any one of those three, it's fine. But I'll ask you, when you've got one of them, we need to find out what the other two are. Something to say, someone to talk to, something to happen as a result. Who is your audience? What do you want to achieve? Is it attitudinal shift? Is it behavioral change? Are you selling something, selling perfumes? So you can see how that looks from a course perspective. So that's what photography looks like. I'm not going to spend loads of time on this because it's a bit dry, but if you want me to send you these slides so you can unpack it and email me to talk about what's exactly in the modules, I'm more than happy to do that. But broadly speaking, we see there's, there's a trinity of C's here. We see photography proper as being about craft. So yes, it's about the craft of being able to make something that you can't digitise. In a world where, where the unit cost of a digital thing is zero, when, when making a million uh, images online costs you nothing, costs the planet a bit, it costs you nothing, right? How, how do you sell something? What can you make this of value? So you need to be able to make something that cannot be digitized. For example, a silver bromide print that might take you an hour to make, or a limited edition print run of those, or, or various other ways that we can make ephemera, things that are fixed in time that you cannot reproduce online. 
So that first year is just is about the craft of making, but it's also about the craft of being a trusted voice, a trusted source, someone that gets listened to. Fashion, on the other hand, fashion is um, differs it differentiates itself from both sport and photography proper, in as much as in as much as it's less about capturing the world, and we understand this to be very much about creating your vision of the world. So this will be about three years of understanding how you see the world, how, why isn't it as, as beautiful as it should be? What will you do to make it, to tell the story that you wanted to tell? And crucially, fashion equals collaboration. You cannot do fashion on your own. And so this has been designed hand in glove with the fashion team. Sport, on the other hand, is very much about capture. But we recognise when we wrote this, this is this network moment that I mentioned earlier on, this is, where, um, this is where we reached out to Getty. If you're not familiar with Getty, then um, please do look Getty up. Any images that you see online probably came through Getty, but as, as a part of our sort of 90 year alumni, most of them are in Getty, it seems. And so when we reached out to them to say, you know, what should, what are the emerging skill sets in, in the storytelling of sport, they were able to help us. Right down to just recently, this year, asking what kit should we have for next year? And Alex Pantling, who I'll show you in a minute, literally opened his bag out at the side of a premiership football match, took everything out and photographed it for us. This is what you need. But we recognise that this sport and capture, because we see it very much as being about data capture, isn't just about making posts as pitch side. Your images are going to be in games, so meaning in game photography, in video game photography, which is a huge, esports is enormous. We understand and recognise that your images will be in games, they will be of games, of course they will, but they'll also be made into games. Most of the people who drove younger people here today, if, uh, without wanting to generalise horribly, but most of the older people who drove people here today probably spent a significant portion of their life watching telly, growing up. Right? Hands up if you didn't. Yes. And so, the younger people that you drove here will have probably spent the similar amount of time playing video games, less watching telly. Why would you watch telly that has adverts when you can just scroll past them or watch something else, right? Telly is a mystery to that younger generation because they spent a significant part of growing up being the hero of their own story. And we understand and know that that is gonna have a major impact on their expectations for engaging with sort of sport, telly, where we're going to call it. We're expecting much more immersive experiences. So um, the photography course says, well, Absolutely not Sausage Factory. I, I, if you've not got it already, then I stress it again. We will get to know you individually and we will un to understand what it is that makes you tick, what makes you burn, because that's the thing that's going to carry you through when you're, when you're not with us anymore. That thing that really excites you, the thing that you love, that you want to share, and that enthusiasm will be contagious and you'll carry people with it. So you'll personalise all of your photography but you'll also be specific moments when you can personalize it throughout the course. Um, there, are, there are one optional module within the second year where, where at that point you get more confident, you get a sense of what it is you want to do and you decide that in fact you definitely want to spend a whole term doing knitwear with your photography. Or you want to spend a whole term working, learning about animation or illustration or filmmaking or graphics or whatever it is and that's where you start that journey. So that when you leave, your portfolio isn't just a portfolio of pictures, it's a unique portfolio of skill sets that you have delivered because this is the job that you are looking to make, if not get. And so, you know, that process will be, will be seminars and workshops. And when you look at the courses, there's a breakdown of how much time you spend in lectures and how much time you spend in workshops and things like that. Um, they change. We are massive advocates of learner-centered teach, uh, sorry, yeah, learner-centered teaching design, which means that if we arrive on day one, the beginning of the month, or the beginning of the term, and half the class don't really learn this way, we never do this, <laughs> we never do chalk and talk. If we learn that half the class don't really like this sort of broadcast mode of delivery, 
then we would immediately switch to uh, a more dialogic, a more conversational, or you know, active sort of way of teaching and learning. So the, the classes very much reflect that. Seminars, discursive, having a chat, looking at pictures, thinking about something that we've read before we arrived or something that happened in the news. Workshops, let's put some of these ideas into action and see how we're going to get. Technical workshops, let's show you how to use this. And you know, the more traditional lectures, which you will also have. There's also an explicit moment where you are encouraged to collaborate more broadly. The university has a mission to become the most collaborative university in the world, which is ambitious. But we recognize that as being an essential skill set, being able to work with other people, not just on your own in your bedroom, in, 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 a, little sort of, in a little bedroom cave. So there are moments where you'll be encouraged to work across with fashion, with animation, with illustration, as I've said, all those other subjects um, for, an, for a module. There are also opportunities for uh, an optional placement year. So we've just had a student who's come back from a year studying in Melbourne, since it's the best year of his life, very young. Um, and I put this in here as well. There's been one or two slides in here from sort of um, from um, alumni. Um, and I, I couldn't get over this. I, she, this Alan was here before I came here. I came here just over a year ago. Um, I couldn't get over this. It really sort of struck out to me that yeah, this is exactly the thing I never would have thought one would do. When we think about work that one would make that cannot be digitised, you know, these images are beautiful digitally, and one uses the net, uses those digital images to reach out and connect with people who are online throughout space and time, quite literally. But in order to get access to one of these objects, these beautiful limited edition, what effectively look like jigsaws. You have to come to Alma and buy it, or come to Alma's website and buy it. And that, that I think, is really interesting. It's certainly a, a key part of building what we refer to as a sustainable practice, or the ideas of those things. We'll tailor your own versions of that. Is anybody in here freelance? Nobody, nobody, okay, so as a photographer, so I only ever worked freelance, although I worked, yeah, I only ever worked freelance. Um, and as a freelancer, you know, one of the things that's really hard, well, there are a number of things that are quite difficult about that. You know, you, that support network isn't there within the company. You know, you can't really lean on other people when you want a day off sick. You can't really take holidays. It's, they are the downsides. However, um, there, are, there, are, there are numerous upsides as well. But one of the challenges is, is sort of building momentum. If you've got something you want to say, something you want to do, if ever you have found yourself in a situation where you wanted to change the world a little bit, it's really hard to build momentum. It takes a lot of effort to connect people with similar interests. Um, but once you do, once you start to snowball that, then you can, you can do great things. One of the great things about being in university is that the university recognizes that when you leave that campaign launch moment, that, that you are the university's best advert, and they pump millions into that moment to support you. And we take full advantage of that money. So I've mentioned Alex Pantling earlier on. So we put a few slides in here because people think, well, what do you do when you leave here? So these are students. Alex is about four years out from here. Um, we had so many sports photographers, people who came and wanted to be sports photographers when they left, that we, that we wrote a course. And as I say, the sports photography course is the first in, and only in the world. So if you want to study sports photography, you will have to come here. We have a lot of students that will come and want to shoot either sort of beauty or fashion. And we have a lot of students that want to shoot geek photography as well. And we're not a discipline specific uh, course on photography. And so you will sit alongside people who want to do this versus yourself who wants to photograph cars versus your friend who wants to just do fashion, versus your friend who wants to just do editorial portraiture or documentary or landscapes or whatever it is. You will all be in the room sharing. We get people right in the first year who will come to us and say, I maybe it's not making pictures that I want to do. I want to be an editor. I want to be an art buyer. I want to be a creative director. We can tailor the next two years towards that because there are there are numerous jobs and opportunities for people who are visually literate and digitally fluent. So visually literate means you can speak, you can speak clearly with images. 
Digitally fluent means you can get heard and you can move people to action. That is what we teach here. So, um, Asunta tells the story, I'm going to steal it from her right now. So, researching the sports photography degree, she spoke to Alex, she spoke to the other people at Getty, they said, yeah, why don't you come down, we'd love a close relationship with you, why don't you come down for the Champions League final? I'm not into football, so it meant nothing to me when Asunta said that, however, it meant a great deal to her. And so, she goes down and excitedly, though the match is playing, and she describes a moment where someone scores a goal. Asunta jumps up in the air because she's very excited, expecting everyone to shout and chant. No moves. All the painfully young people, painfully, look how young these people are, straight from the university, right? Every one of the people in this shop is a photographer. Every one. It's a head down moment because they've got seconds to get the images in from the people who were standing pitch side. But here's, here's the kicker. What Asunta learns is that in fact, there were people involved who had to get the camera kit and the photographer to the, to the venue. A photographer had to do that because only they know which kit, how it has to travel, where it has to arrive. The photographer, a photographer, this is their job, had to book the, the positions around the pitch for the Getty photographers. They had to put, pick the positions in the sky for the cameras. They then, had to, um, they then have to edit these pictures as they come in, that means crop them. They then had to correct the camera person who was on site to tell them that they got the wrong color space, the wrong aperture. They weren't, they weren't shooting the right thing. From this chair here, the pictures come in, they edit them, they crop them, they keyword them. They then identify which players are most valuable. What does that mean? Who knows what that means? Obviously it means how much they work, but in this context, what does that mean? How many, how many clicks do I get, sorry? What did you say? said SEO. SEO, uh, indirectly yes, and how many clicks do I get? Yes, yes. So we, we didn't know until this, this moment that the players are ranked, and of course Erling Haaland is in this context the most expensive player. And so what it meant was that the person who scored the goal wasn't the most valuable picture. It was Erling Haaland's reaction to the goal being scored. This has to be established immediately before the images are sent out. That's why, while the is jumping up and down, everyone else's heads down, because this is when the work really starts. But here's the kicker again. This bloke here needs a wee. <laughs> right, this one here, he's, right? He says to Asunta, Can I, do, you, do you mind sipping in here for a second, please? He jumps off, Asunta jumps in and finds that she can do all these things because cropping, editing, keywording, identifying images that are strong, Im images that are weak. We forgot we learned all those skills. That's just like, that's the stuff we do and we don't even talk about it. Turns out it's a highly transferable skill in this niche moment. But she could just walk in immediately and start working. But she's staying here, aren't you, Asunta? For now. Yeah. <laughs> so my point being, my point being that there are jobs that we, there are, there are known knowns and, and known unknowns. There are jobs that we are emergent, that we are just beginning to understand, and we are trying to keep ahead of that. That's why we're putting ourselves in that virtual production space, literally. That's why Asunta is going to these spaces to find out what the skill set needs are so that we can tailor the learning around those skill sets. And very often, hands down, it's we have to position our skill, ourselves as co-learners because I don't know enough about AI right now. That's on my mind right now. I didn't even know that a promptographer was a job until recently. And so what I have to do now is find out who are the experts in this and get us in their life so that they want to work here. Getty are talking about doing the Olympics from here, in our dark room. I'll, I'll put a slide on the end so you can photograph the screen that has everybody's email addresses on it, so uh, there will be opportunities. And the reason I was doing that is because, you know, the best questions are the ones you think of on the way home. And you can then ask them by email. You'll have email addresses from myself, but Asunta, who is walking around, Asunta is the course leader for the new sports photography course. There'll be email addresses for David Summerill, David's curly hair guy with a beard, he's a course leader for the BA Photography. And there's an email address for Jed as well, Jed Hoyland, who is the uh, year one tutor on the, on the photography course. 
So very kindly lifting chairs and bringing people in is Sarah. And Sarah is a student. So if you'd like to have a, a chat with stu Sarah, student to student, away from us, then please do. Um, she'll tell you things that, uh, well, things away from me. So, um, yes, yeah, so the question, I asked if you had any questions, and somebody said, um, if you apply, will you have to have an interview? No, we're not doing interviews, and I will do all the applications. And the thing that I look for is not whether or not you've got great photographs, because bizarrely, we teach photography. It's the one thing that we can actually do for you, without question. What we're looking for is people who are nice. We're looking for nice people who turn up and have a creative drive and want to do something. You know, something's not quite right in the world and they want to make it better, or they just don't feel as though they quite fit in and they need to sort of talk about that through their images. They're the people I look for. And I then look to sort of build the most interesting and fun and inclusive and supportive room that I can. The room that I would like to go and sit in if I was studying again. So that's how we sort of recruit. So when you apply, if you're thinking or stressed in any way about your application or seeing it as a test, this is not a test, all you need to do is write to me and we'll talk you through and I will literally write your application with you. If you go and take it to another university, I will haunt you. <laughs> so, but no, genuinely, um, we will just do it together because a part of that process is about you making sure that I, representing us, are the right fit for you. Right, so, so yes, yeah, so it's not a test, does that answer that question? Yeah, right, correct.